In this video, I'm going to talk about cerebellar syndromes. Cerebellar syndromes. So syndromes we can see with dysfunction of the cerebellum. Cerebellar syndromes. And there are a number of abnormalities we can see with dysfunction of different parts of the cerebellum. And basically, all of these cerebellar syndromes involve incoordination. Incoordination. So abnormal coordination of movements of different parts of the body. And I like to think about kind of four different types of incoordination, although there, is, there are more abnormalities we can see with cerebellar dysfunction. So the first of these is incoordination of walking. So abnormal walking. So let me just color in kind of the middle part of the person here down between the legs too to represent abnormal walking. And so these folks will often kind of be staggering around and looking very unsteady, like they're walking on ice. Their balance is poor when they're trying to walk. And the part of the cerebellum that plays a big role in coordinating the muscles involved in walking is kind of this middle part of the cerebellum. So let me mark this in like this. And when we see in coordinated walking, it's often from a lesion of the middle part of the cerebellum like this. It can be from other areas too, but this is a real common place of dysfunction in the nervous system that can give you in coordinated walking. With cerebellar dysfunction, we can also see in coordination of limb movements. So not walking, but other kinds of limb movements. Say, trying to reach out and grab something with your hand. That could be a real incoordinated and inaccurate movement. Or the same thing with a leg. If you're trying to reach out and touch something with your foot, you could be have an incoordinated movement, and it could be very inaccurate. And limb incoordination is common with cerebellar dysfunction. And it's usually from dysfunction of the side of the cerebellum, not the middle part here, but the side of the cerebellum. And it's usually from dysfunction of the same side of the cerebellum as the limbs that are incoordinated. So if we're looking from the back, at the back of the brain here, and we have dysfunction of the right side of the cerebellum over here, what we'd usually see is incoordination of the right arm and the right leg, so those limbs on the same side. This often confuses people because most other problems with the brain, you actually get a problem on one side of the brain and the other side of the body. But the cerebellum is set up a little differently. And we won't go into the wiring now. We'll save that for later videos. But that is what we typically see with dysfunction of one side of the cerebellum is in coordination of the limbs on the same side of the body. Another abnormality we can see with cerebellar dysfunction is in coordination of the muscles of speech. So there are lots of different muscles that have to be finely coordinated to enunciate properly, to speak clearly, particularly consonant sounds. And so with cerebellar dysfunction, there's often incoordination of these muscles of speech, and enunciation is abnormal. And often it's slurred speech that's produced, so that a person's trying to say the proper words, but it comes out slurred and hard to understand. And lots of different parts of the cerebellum are involved in coordinating those muscles involved in speech. And with cerebellar dysfunction, we can also see incoordination of the muscles that move the eyes. So there are a number of little muscles that move the eyes around so that we can look at what we want to look at. And if there's a problem with the cerebellum, those are often incoordinated. And there are other abnormalities of eye movements that can occur with cerebellar dysfunction. And that gets a little complicated, so I'll save the details of that for later. So these are some of the common syndromes we can see with dysfunction of the cerebellum, involving incoordination of muscles involved in walking, limb movements, speech, and eye movements. But the cerebellum, to do its job, needs to get information about the motor plan and position sense information about the movement that's occurring and give feedback back to the motor areas. And so if there's a problem getting that information into the cerebellum, like that motor plan information, if it can't get into the cerebellum properly, or if there's trouble getting that position sense information into the cerebellum so it can see how the movement is going, or if there's trouble getting that feedback information from the cerebellum back to the motor areas of the brain, then you can also get these abnormalities. So dysfunction of the cerebellum itself or dysfunction of any of these connections bringing information into or away from the cerebellum could give you incoordination of these sorts of movements. But cerebellar dysfunction won't give you weakness and you won't get any of those motor neuron signs, either the upper or the lower motor neuron signs, because the cerebellum doesn't talk directly to muscles itself. It's just talking to other parts of the nervous system that are involved in talking to the actual muscles through the upper and the lower motor neurons. 
So these are abnormalities of movement that don't involve weakness. Instead, we, there's incoordination, movements that are clumsy, they're not smooth, and or they're inaccurate. The movement may not hit the target as it was intended. So there are other things we can see with cerebellar dysfunction, but I'll stop there to just try to introduce this category of syndromes with cerebellar dysfunction or dysfunction of its connections.